Hi and welcome into my studio and the image you can see on screen now is a pastel that I recently did of a wolf and it was a, a major piece for me to tackle and before I jumped right into it I wanted to try some things out I wanted to try out some colors some pan pastels and I wanted to see how they was all going to work together and build confidence in myself so I thought that I could you know really do a good wolf now the main wolf is on my patreon channel um, if you don't know about that I do videos on there every month they're really in depth and it's about four hours long I miss virtually nothing out there's lots and lots of real-time footage on there and voiceovers where I'm giving tips and techniques but the video you're gonna see now is gonna be a short series of videos it's of that test piece that I did so it's just a small section of the wolf's head but you, at least you're going to see how I tackle all different furs, the glassy eye, the nose, and that type of thing. Here you can see I've got my pastel matte paper set out. I've got my drawing transferred onto it with graphite paper. I've got those circular pastels. So they're called pan pastels. Compressed, very high quality pastels in a cake pot. And you use soft pastel tools like a sponge which I'm using they're specific tools they come in all different shapes and sizes so I'm trying different ones out on this wolf as well and that's what I'm going to be using on this first section and what I'm doing is the under layer the blocking in stage that I would be doing in oils and if you're new to pastels pastels are very very similar in technique to oils they cross over really well it's easy to jump I find from oils to pastels and vice versa because you work in such a similar way you work from dark to light now if you work in colored pencils you know the main issue you've got with colored pencils is you can't really put a light over a dark easily and that's what uh, I found that really frustrated me with that um, colored pencil and why I find pastels so so much easier okay so what I'm doing now is as I said blocking in so I'm creating an underdrawing a map as such where I'm putting in you know the lights and the darks but I'm not going too dark I'm not going very very dark and I'm not gonna go very very light either so I'm putting in kind of like middle tone because on top of this underdrawing that's when I'm gonna come in with the pencils that you can see on the left Carbothello pencils and the pastel sticks Conti sticks you can see on the right hand side and as I say, I go into much, much more detail than this on my Patreon channel because, you know, then I've got the luxury of being able to spend four hours in videos showing you and telling you everything and every step that I'm doing along the way. On the shorter videos and on YouTube, I've got to compress that um, down quite a lot. So if you want the real long videos with lots of instructions, that's www.patreon.com forward slash wildlife art and I've got roughly about 550 supporters members on there now okay so I've got the the luxury of having a full set of pan pastels so I can look at my subject I've looked at my reference photo and then I've tried to match up those base colors that I'm applying now with the colors I've got in my set and there's some wonderful colors in there lots of natural earth colors too as well as vibrant ones if you haven't got pan pastels you could use you know soft pastels um, perhaps Rembrandt pastels there's lots of different makes out there but if you're going to use very very soft pastels and things like unison can be very soft be careful you're not filling the tooth of the paper up because if you fill it up too early on then your pencils won't go over the top of them so you'll see in probably part two of this video how I blend this underdrawing into the paper, how I really push it into it. And that's quite critical because it then allows me to put the pencils on top. By pushing the pastel in, I'm still retaining a lot of the tooth of the paper. Now pastel matte is a sanded paper, so it's got a very lightly sandpaper texture, very lightly, more of a uh, satin velvety feel to it really. But if you use a different paper, something like an ingress type paper, or, you know, those pa pastel papers that got that uniform pattern on there, that's the type of paper I used years ago, it's not going to work. You're not going to get the right layers on there and you're not going to get the details. 
I've got other YouTube videos that shows me testing out these papers so I urge you to have a look at those because it's going to show you why I use things like pastel mat, pastel card and UART papers. So I'm just going to continue now with this blocking in process. I'm not sure if you can see in that bottom right hand corner below that reddish pan pastel I'm resting it on a piece of paper. Now that's just a normal piece of card or paper and I'm using that kind of as my mixing palette. So you'll see I'll grab a, a colour, dab it on the paper, perhaps another colour to perhaps blue it down a bit or redden it slightly and I'm just rubbing it on that paper, mixing them together just as you would using a palette with paints. Because with the pan pastels they mix much more readily than normal pastels. So I wouldn't say you'd use it to kind of have a blue and a yellow to make a green but if you've got a colour in there that's quite close to what you want then say for instance um, I wanted a, a reddish brown but mine's not quite reddish then you can take your brown and put a little bit of something like a burnt sienna in there to warm it up so you can use that uh, small mix in area and you can also mix in the pan if you want to so put one colour into another just to adjust those colours now I found normal pastel, pastel sticks, don't really mix well like that and that's why you see lots of pastel artists they have lots and lots of different colours because with pastels we're not mixing like we do with paints we're more selecting the colours from our uh, say selection of pencils you can see on the left and looking for the closest match that way. So you can see I've lightened a few areas up again darkening this bottom section and you can see that I'm using that um, soft tool in the fur growth and the way that it's lying and that's quite important and I say about that in every one of my wildlife videos and uh, on my Patreon channel as well because that's what gives the body of the animal shape and form. So darkening the section at the top, blocking in. Now with pastels we generally, you see a lot of pastel artists they work on one small area at a time. They start in the top left hand corner and pretty much complete it before moving down slightly and if you are right handed you see they will generally work from top left to bottom right just so they're not resting on the paper. Now you can get away around that in a few ways. You can either have a piece of paper to rest your hand on as you'll see later in the demo or you can work upright and work in flat just for film purposes so there's a few ways to work around it but I found that with pan pastels what I'm doing is creating the work more like I would with oils so I'm getting a base down rather than working on one small section at a time I'm working on pretty much the whole base and then bringing everything up to completion to the same level which makes much more sense to me So I'm not going very detailed on this undrawing because as I said it's the map, it's the um, basic tones that's on there. It's going to allow me to concentrate on top now getting the um, pencil work going well on there and actually creating the fur texture so I can concentrate on that more than the tones because I will have this map underneath that's going to really simplify things for me. If you're looking for more art resources, I've really got you covered. I've got a dedicated tutorial website, that's jasonmorgan.co.uk, lots of videos on there, ebook tutorials, you name it, it's on that site. I've got a Patreon art channel. So every month I put up brand new videos, and that could be pastel videos, oils, charcoals, they're full length videos and there's also photo references with the Easy Trace line art on there. I've got quite a few hundred people supporting me and that's on Patreon. And also if you're after even more reference photos, I've got a dedicated website just packed and packed with reference photos. I think there's about 900 on there at the moment. So that's wildlifeart-online.com. Now please, with my YouTube channel, new videos coming on here as well. If you can possibly subscribe to the channel, then you're never going to miss out on new videos.